Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to drag ragdoll bodies or any other physics object that you want in your games. So let me hit play and show you what it is that we're going to make today. So as you can see, I've loaded in. These three AI have simply just dropped down ragdolling. And if I were to go up, I'm able to hold G or whatever button you want. I can drag a ragdoll like this. And you'll also notice it is dragging them by the specific bone that I want to. So if you look at my crosshair on screen where it is, so it's over the head, hold G and I can drag them by the head perfectly like so. And this works again with any physics object you want. I've only got AI in here at the moment, but you can see I've got multiple different ones in here and it's working. So let's drag them by the spine. Let's drag them by his elbow or his arm like so. You can see this is working perfectly. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've made it. So I've already got a few things set up for this video, which I assume you might have already as well. Those being I am in first person instead of third person, as this just works a lot better and a lot nicer because it's based on where the player is looking. And I also have these AI already doing ragdoll. So for the ragdoll, that's very, very simple. I'll go over that quickly. You can go in here. You can see I've got nothing in here. What you want to do is go on the mesh, set the collision to be ragdoll. So the collision presets to ragdoll. And then you just want to tick simulate physics like so and that is as easy as it is that will make them ragdoll now for the camera if i were to open up my player character here which is bp third person character you can see all i've done is i've just moved my camera onto my mesh and i've changed a few settings as well if you want a full video on how to do that check on screen now in the link in the description down below where i go over how to create a true first person camera in your games but with all of that set up out of the way, sorry I went over that a bit quick, it's just because again, that's not part of today's video, I'm just telling you what I already have done. What we can do is now open up our character blueprint, so I'm already here, which is again for me the BP third person character, I'm going to go straight over to the event graph. Now what we need to do here is find some empty space, oh and sorry also you can see I've already got a crosshair as well, which I just did very very simply, I just did a button in the middle of my screen. You'll want to do that properly, but again, this is just for the purpose of the video, just so we can see where the mouse currently is. Well, where the center of the screen is, sorry. Uh, but again, let's get back on with it. So what we want to do first is we want to actually create an input action for us to be able to drag the body. So we'll go back into our content browser. And for me, this is going to be in third person input actions. And I'm simply just going to right click, go to input, create an input action and call this IA underscore drag. And then I'm going to go back and open up my IMC default or the input mapping context. And then in here, I'll add a new mapping. This one being my IA underscore drag that we just created. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be G. You can set this to any button you want, but I think for me, G works best for grab. Now you can do this on left mouse button, but I might want to use that for something else in my game. Or you can do this on right mouse button or middle mouse or Q, whatever it is that makes the most sense for you do that but for me i'm doing g so we will save this close and go back into our character blueprint and now we can right click and search for what we just named it so i named mine ia underscore drag and we want to get the enhanced action event not the action value so we have action event here ia drag we'll open this up so we can have access to all the execution pins as i want to use started and completed because i want to be able to hold the button not toggle it if you want to toggle what you can do is come out of started and get a flip-flop and then whatever i do out of started you will do out of a and whatever i do out of completed you will do out of b however again i want to hold not toggle but that was how you would do it so what we want to do is we want to first try and find a physics object or ragdoll body for us to interact with so we will come out of started for of our input action here or again a from your flip-flop and we will then get a line trace for objects, simply like so. And we want to do this based on where the player is looking. So we're going to get our camera in here. And out of this, we will get world location. So where the camera currently is in the world. And that will go into start. And then we just want to go forward a certain amount of units. So we'll come out of the camera again and get forward vector. So we're going forwards. Drag out of this and get a multiply, changing the bottom value to be a float double precision or just a float and we can set this to whatever value you like i'm going to set it to 500 so we'll go 500 units forwards and a unit is one centimeter so we'll go 500 centimeters forward 
Again, you can choose whatever it is that you like, but for me, that seems to work the best for what I want. Then I'll move this over a little bit more, drag out of the get world location again, and we'll get an addition. And this will go into the multiplication we just did there. And then this will go into end. Now, the reason why we have the addition here is this just keeps it going in a straight line. Otherwise, it will go kind of off a wonky angle. So this just keeps it going straight. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit by right clicking and straightening. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Right click, straighten to the vector plus vector. And I'll straighten these as well, just to keep it nice and organized and looking neat. And then this is now going to draw a line 500 units in front of us. So what we can do is draw a debug type for duration, compile, and then it will give us an error just because we've not finished it yet. But if I were to press play and then play an editor, ignore the error again, we've not finished yet. I'm just showing you that if we were to press G, well, I can't actually move anymore, so I have fully broken it. So let's actually finish this bit off. The next thing we want to do is object types, drag out this and make array. And then we will set it from world static to physics body. Now, if we compile that, we have no errors. And what this is doing is making sure that we are only going to be interacting with objects that have physics enabled. So this means that you can't drag a wall or drag a door or drag you know, a chair, anything like that. This means you can only drag things that have physics on them. For example, ragdoll bodies or I don't know, a bottle, whatever it is that you have in your game with physics enabled, you can only interact with those instead of anything, which just prevents us from again, ruining the whole level. So now if we were to hit play, I can show you that now everything's working again. If I press G, we have a line going forwards like that perfectly in front of it. So if I go in front of an AI here, you can see that it has actually interacted with it. So you can see it's interacted because it has a little red square at the bottom of it, whereas on the floor, it doesn't have that, which means we can drag the physics body there, but we can't drag the floor here, which is perfect. So let's go back into our code here and start finishing it off again. What we want to do after the line trace is hold down B and left click to get a branch, plugging in the return value into the condition and the branch into the execution there. And this just means that again, it will only do it if we hit this physics body. So we have to make sure that the return value is true. So we have hit something that we want to hit. Then we're going to get the out hit and break hit result, opening this up like so. And we're going to right click on the impact point and promote this to a variable and name this drag target lock for location. So where it currently is situated, plug that into true of the branch, then right click on hit component, promote it to a variable. And we're going to name this drag target as this is what we want to actually drag. And we'll set that after that as well. Then what we want to do is we want to go to add components in the top left and we want to add in a physics handle. And this just allows us to interact with other physics objects. And this also makes our life so much easier because if we drag this into our event graph and drag out of it, what we can do is simply get grab component at location. And that just means the code for actually interacting with and picking up the physics object is done for us. So we can just plug that into there like so. The component is going to be our drag target. The grab location is going to be our drag target location. And the in bone name is going to be hit bone name from the break hit result like so. And again, this means that we can now actually drag by a specific bone like I showed you in the beginning. Now, the reason why we have promoted variables and set the target location and the target itself, but not the bone name is because we're going to need to modify these two values later on, but we don't need to modify the bone. So now we can close this break hit result to keep it looking nice and organized again. And I might just get some root nodes here as well. So we can double click to get a root node to again, keep it looking nice and neat and organized perfectly like so. I'm happy with how this looks. Now by default, this will glitch out a little bit because what this is doing is this is the world location. However, we want it to be relative for the player. So what we need to do is transform the location. And this is actually a lot easier than it sounds. So what we're going to do is drag in a reference to our camera once again, and out of this, we're going to get world transform. So the current transform of the camera in the world, which is the location rotation to scale. Out of this, we will get inverse transform location. And this is simply going to, as you can see, transform position by the inverse of the supply transform. So it's going to take it from a world space to a local space, but also inverse it. And the location wants to be the drag target location here. So that is what we are actually inversing and transforming. And then what we're going to do is just set the drag target location once again to this new value we've just created. 
And then after this, we're going to update moving it, but we need to create that first. So we'll compile, save this, and then we'll go on to doing that. So if we move back to the beginning of our code and just go underneath it, we'll right click, add a custom event, and we'll name this update drag lock for drag location again. And this is again, very simple, nice and easy. What we can do is get a reference to our drag target that we created earlier, and we can get that. Out of this, we'll get an is valid, the one with the question mark, and plug that into our custom event. And that means that this is only going to fire off if we actually have a target that we want to currently drag. Now, this is good for multiple reasons, because it means if this is somehow fired off and we don't want it to, which it shouldn't, but if, let's say it does, nothing is going to happen because we won't have a target. But it also means that this is how we can then loop it, because once we drop the target, this will then not be valid anymore, which means it's going to stop trying to drag something which isn't there. But let's get on with it, and that will make more sense when we finish the code. So what we're going to do is we can get the physics handle once again, drag out of this, and set target location. Again, nice and easy for already done for us. Set the location perfectly like so. And what we want to do is something similar to what we did before. So we'll go back up here, select the camera, the world transform, and the target location, copy that, and paste it down here. And we want to transform it again, but this time not inverse. So we'll come out the return value of the get world transform, and we will simply just transform location. Again, we don't want to inverse it this time, just transform it from world space to local space. Plug all this in, and the return value goes into the new location. And that is now simply going to update the location for where we want to drag our physics body. Now we do need to loop this as well. So we'll hold down D, left click to get a delay. And I'm going to set this to 0.01. You can set this to whatever you like. Obviously, the lower the number, the quicker it is, so the better it will look. But also, the more times it's going to be running every second. So if you do it too quick, it will lag. But for me, this is perfectly fine. And then after this, we'll call the function update drag location just to loop it like so. Now, you could do this on event tick. However, that's not too efficient. I don't really like doing it on event tick. And I did think of other ways of doing it which were more efficient. For example, doing it when the player moves their mouse or something. But I, that for me, that just didn't look too good. It kind of just looked like it was lagging. So this is the best way I found to do it. But you can also obviously experiment with it as well if you want to. However, that is now done for picking up and dragging a physics object. But how do we also release it? Well, this is again, very, very simple. What we can do is come out of completed of our input action or B of your flip-flop if that's what you're using. And we want to get release components out of the physics handle like so. So we'll get that here perfectly like this. And then what we want to do to fix this loop down here is just set our drag target to blank like so. So just set it and don't put anything in there. That will mean it's no longer valid, which means this loop will stop. We can compile and save this. And this is now all of our code perfectly done to pick up, drag and drop a physics object. Or the one thing I've just noticed as I zoomed out, sorry, is we need to actually call this function so that we do start dragging it. So just at the very end of the code here, where we have the set drag target location, we're going to call function update drag lock. And that is now completely done. It's going to drag it. So we'll compile, save and close this. If I were to hit play, you can see if this is working. So we load in, we can see all the physics objects falling down ragdoll like so. And if I were to go up to one, put my crosshair over the foot, hold G and I can drag and you can see we are now dragging this physics object perfectly like so. Hold them by the head and we're doing that as well. Hold them by the spine. This is working perfectly as you can see. What I'm going to do as well is remove the line trace. So we'll go back into our code. Let's go into our third person character. Go to the line trace and just turn the draw debug type from for duration to none. Compile, save, and this is again now working perfectly. We're not seeing any debug options. So we'll go over here, go to this one first, pick it up perfectly like so. And so with that, I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set it up so we can pick up and drag any physics object that we want, especially ragdoll objects by the specific bone as well perfectly like this and I think this looks great and is a great effect. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it and find it helpful, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and our channel out a lot and we're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers so any help is really appreciated and if you can share the channel as well, that would also be great. So again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.